In this video, we'll look at how to use Excel to forecast a time series using Holt's linear method of exponential smoothing. So here again is the data that we're going to forecast. It's variable here, just called Y, the same as we used in the single exponential smoothing uh, video. Uh, as before, it's over 24 periods, the first nine being the training set, the rest the test set. Now Holt's linear method um, is best used with data which has a linear trend, but no seasonal, uh, no seasonality, no seasonal variation. Uh, it's more complicated than single exponential smoothing in that there are two basic uh, things to calculate. The level of the series L and the slope B, and the forecasts are formed from both. So. Here are the equations that we need to uh, implement this method. Uh, we first of all need to initialize both L and B. So as we can see here, the first value of L is just going to be set to the actual value. So let's do that. So putting a former in here, the first value of L just equals the actual value of the data. The initial value of b, b period 1, is equal to the difference between y in period 2 and y in period 1. So, putting that in. First value b is equal to y2 minus 1. Now, for the remaining uh, values of l and b, we need to use these two formulas. So looking at l, as we can see, L in period T, which T is standing for the current period, so at the moment we're talking about L in period 2, is equal to alpha times Y in period 2, plus 1 minus alpha times the sum of L and B in T minus 1, which is period 1 in this case. Now, alpha is one of the two key parameters that underlie this model. The other one is beta. And again, we will set those at some arbitrary value between 0 and 1, and then later on find the optimum values of those by choosing alpha and beta to minimize the mean squared error. The same optimization process we use with single exponential smoothing. So let's put in the value of L here in period 2. So it's equal to alpha. Now we must make that absolute as, as before. So it's alpha times yt, y in the same period, plus 1 minus alpha brackets needed of course, times in brackets the sum of L and B in T minus 1, the previous period. So that one plus that one. So that will give us L in period 2, and we can then copy that down to do the rest. But before I, I'm not going to do that straight away, I'm going to do B as well and then copy them down together. So that gives me enough L in period 2. Now let's put B. So B in period T, the current period, period 2 in this case, is equal to beta times the difference between L in the current period and L in the previous period, plus 1 minus beta times B in the current, in the previous period. So let's put that in. So it's equal to beta times difference between L in the current period and L in the previous period now it's plus 1 minus beta times B in T minus 1 the previous period so that should do it. That will give us the 
value of b in period 2. Okay, now that we have the former info on both l and b, I can copy them down simultaneously because you can see they depend upon each other. So we have to do it this way. So dragging these two down will give us the values of l and b. Now, to make the forecast, we use this formula here. Now this tells us that the forecast in period t plus m, now here we're going to use uh, one step ahead forecast, so m will be 1. So the forecast in period t plus 1, which is 1 ahead of the current period, will be equal to l in the current period plus b in the current period times m. Well, m is 1, so that's just b. So in other words, f, the forecast in period t plus 1, will be the sum of the previous values of l and b. So that means, of course, that we can't do it for f1 here because there is no previous values of l and b. We have to start with period 2. So we're saying that the forecast in period 2 is simply equal to the sum of l and b in the previous period. That. So now I can easily copy down, drag down to do the other ones. Okay, so those are our initial forecasts. They're not the best ones, of course, because we haven't optimized alpha and beta yet. Now, to do that, of course, I want to, I need to find the mean squared error and minimize it. Okay, uh, the same process we used uh, in single exponential smoothing. So first of all, I need the errors, which of course is actual minus forecast. Obviously, I can't do that for period one. So actual minus forecast, obviously zero to begin with. Now, get the remaining errors by copying the formula. Now I want to square those. So those are the squared errors. Now I want the average of those, the mean. So using the average function, of course. So there we have my mean squared error, the initial one. But I want to make that as small as possible uh, by optimizing alpha and beta. And again, as with single exponential smoothing, I can use the built-in solver add-in. Now this, of course, is under the data uh, menu. And I explained in the previous video that if that isn't there, it's because you haven't uh, loaded up that add-in. And you can easily do that uh, and f uh, by, um, as you'll see if you look in the previous video, how to do that. So let me click on here so it knows what I'm trying to minimize. Go to the solver. And again, very intelligently, it's, it's figured out what I want to do. It knows I'm trying to minimize the value in M7. The, I'm trying to minimize that by changing the variables in here, M2 and 3. No constraints. So we're all set to go. It's, it's very clever how it picks that up. Remember, of course, if it doesn't, you can easily set these three things yourself. So let's choose solve. And up come the answers. So these are the optimum values of alpha and beta to minimize the MSC. Notice it was about 298 before it's gone down to 274 now. So that has optimized my forecast. Uh, I can now generate the forecast for the future, which is what I'm trying to do ultimately, of course. So using the forecasting formula here, now what we need to do here is to forecast for one period ahead here and then two periods ahead and so on. So in other words, we're going to set m firstly equal to 1 for one period ahead and then 2 and then 3 and so on. So notice how we get the forecast. The forecast in 
One period ahead will be the sum of L and B in the previous period. Two periods ahead, taking T to be the current period, so two periods ahead, will again be the sum of the previous uh, values of L and B, but with B times 2. So that's why I've got these um, things here, these values of M, so that I can put them into this formula. So in other words, to get the first formula forecast here, what I need to put is equals, so it's L, previous value of L, plus the previous value of B. Now, wait a moment, that in fact is always going to use that value of L, so I need to fix that. Now, plus the previous value of B, and again it's always going to use that, times, and the thing that varies is the value of M, 1 to begin with. So, leaving that relative, when I copy it down it will then become M2, M3 and so on, but the others, L and B stay the same. So that's how we get the forecasts. Notice we keep using these values of L and B. So putting the first forecast in, we get that. And then if I drag down to do the rest, there we have our forecast. So unlike single exponential smoothing, which was a flat forecast, you could basically only forecast for one period, uh, the first period into the future and the rest were the same. Here you do get additional forecasts uh, for future periods. So that shows you then how to use Holt's linear method.